What's up YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr Games, bringing you an insanely fun deck, uh, and that is going to be Gizmex, but what I'm also going to show you throughout this profile as well is I'm going to show you, um, currently there's nine spaces in the deck, and I'm going to show you an alternation between different kind of engines you can put into the deck um, that give it a different angle. And what kind of makes Gizmex so fun is that all of the components, or all of the Gizmex themselves, utilize different aspects of the game. Whether it be board wipes, whether it be banishing, whether it be special summoning in conjunction to your opponent's special summoning, or whether it be just general special summon to steal one of your opponent's cards. Um, I've played this around with this deck, I really enjoy it. it obviously it has its downsides because you're playing a lot of high level monsters, uh, but that is where the rest of the engines come in to kind of make it competitive and give it a fighting edge. Also a shout out to your Asian spirit on YouTube. Um, I saw his video, uh, and my god, like he did it with the OCG cards, and I'm like, damn, they got all the Gizmex in ulties, and they look beautiful. Uh, so I took inspiration from that as well, but then I kind of added my own little spin onto it, uh, just to kind of help it compete, help it can, um, work through the grind game, uh, and also utilize going first, and of course, going second. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe, so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content from the channel. We've got so much more coming up for you throughout the month of March, and then leading into April, which is probably going to be one of the busiest Yu-Gi-Oh! months around, considering it is the release, or should be, the release of Ghosts from the Past. With all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into today's profile of... Gizmex. Now, it's not really pure Gizmex, it really dictates what other engine you put into it, um, but the premise is the same, that your Gizmex are going to be your boss monsters. So, you play the main Mac Daddy, and that is of course Gizmex Orochi, uh, the Serpentron Sky Slasher. Now, if you haven't faced this because you joined after um, Orca's format, well, let me tell you about this guy. So, quick effect, you can banish 8 cards from the top of your deck to special summon this card from the hand or graveyard. And then on a separate turn, you can banish three cards from your extra deck to target a card on the field and pop it. Now, you can only use one of those effects per turn, so you can't revive it and then banish and pop. As you see we go through this profile, you'll understand that banishing is quite a big part of the deck. So you'll also understand why there is a specific monster in this deck that loves banishing. We've then got triple Gizmek Akami. Now, Akami is like... It reminds me of the Sky Serpent from Power Rangers, because it's just like this insane little serpent dragon kind of thing. It's really kind of cool. It's badass as well. Uh, keep in mind, they are all machines as well. So what Akami can do is you pay 1,500 life points to destroy all monsters on the field that were special summoned from the extra deck. To me, it's okay. It's a nice board wipe, but because you're paying life points to do it and it's only from the extra deck, it can be a bit restrictive. Uh, and you can only attack one monster this turn. Uh, you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If, a, uh, if two or more monsters special summon from the extra are on the field, you can special summon this card from the hand. If this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card, you can banish one monster your opponent can, uh, in your opponent's graveyard and gain life points equal to its attack. So, it is your boss monster at 2950, um, but we do use the extra deck engine to help kind of utilize it a little bit more. We've then got triple um, Gizmet Makami. Now, this one, what I love about these is they're also like zo uh, Zoids. So it's kind of like a mix of like the beast versions of, of um, like Beast Wars and um, Beast Morphers and stuff like that. And it's also got like a Power Ranger element to it and it's also got a Zoid element to it. They're just really kind of cool. So it's kind of nice that once we got all of the cards, uh, I think the most recent one was this guy in Phantom Rage that we were able to build nearly a pure deck of it. So this is the only one that you can technically normal summon without a tribute, because uh, while six or more of your cards are banished, you can normal summon this card without tributing. Only use each of the following effects once per turn. Um, if this guy is normal or special, you can discard one monster, add one monster whose uh, uh, attack equals its own defense, which all of the Gizmex do, uh, from your deck to your hand, except himself. And then if this card in the monster zone is destroyed, you can shuffle six of your uh, banished cards into the deck. So it allows you to recycle. But the idea is that you're just going to be able to discard to get you um, to the Gizmet you want. And probably the one you want to go for more times than not will be Orochi. Because he's just got that ability to special himself for free during either player's turn. You just need to manage your amount of banished cards. We then got Triple Uka. Now, I'm not 100% set on the Triple Uka, to be totally honest, purely because like it's really great if the format starts becoming like Needle Fiber Turbo again, because the one thing, or why this spiked in price, was people were dropping this um, during your opponent's turn, and you bring out the Barrier Statue of, Store, uh, Barrier Statue of Water, uh, and pretty much locking your opponent out. But the idea is, each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster or monsters inflict 300 damage to them, uh, only use each of the following effects once per turn. If a monster or monsters is special summoned from the main deck, except during a damage deck, you can special summon this card from the hand. 
If this card is normal or special, do you entitle one face-up monster your opponent controls, special on one monster from your hand or deck whose attack equals its defense with the same attribute as that monster? So, now keep in mind, it can bring out any of the gizmets, because the gizmets are uh, fire, water, wind, uh, earth, and light, and even dark as well. So it brings out any of the Gizmex. But what people were doing is off of Needle Fiber, you would then summon this, target Needle Fiber, and then special summon out uh, the Water Barrier Statue. And then your opponent was like, ah, yeah, cool. Um, now obviously if you do that, the only way you're, the only card you're gonna be able to special summon from that point, which is fine, because you can just normal summon the man himself, um, but you can also special summon out the Gizmet Okami as well. Um, so the reason I don't, I'm not set on three of this is purely because it's not a format where you're special summon heavy from deck. Now obviously Eldritch Zudu, but they're bringing out a Golden Lord, they've probably got Zeus to back it up, and even if they don't, you're then only going to be able to bring out a Light, and your Light target um, is going to be your Gizmet Yatta, which is a bit meh. You can bring out the various statues of Light, but then it ha I don't know how much further it's really going to get you, because they just use Conquistador or anything like that to get rid of it. Um, so it's something I'll be considered possibly dropping down to two, but it works out really, really nicely. And the card that I'd probably bump up to three is Gizmet Kaku. I love this card when it first came out. It was better in Master Rule 4, um, purely because if a monster is in the extra monster zone, you special summon this card from the hand. Type one face-up monster in the extra monster zone, equip that face-up monster to this card. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you special summon one of the monsters equipped to this card. I only use each effect once per turn. So again, you really need your opponent to put a monster in the main monster zone, which it's very, very rare that Virtual Worlds are going to be doing that. It's very rare that Drytron are going to be doing that. And it's even rarer that Eldritch Zoo are going to be doing that. So its effectiveness is a little bit weak. But just for being able to get a free 2750 on board, you can control that just by putting a monster in the extra monster zone. And then the final one is a Yatta. I really should need to find my secret version of this. That's the only one downside is... Um, and I'm pretty sure OCG had it as well. I think OCG, the Makami, is actually secret, but the rest are ulties. Uh, but it would have been nice to get these as secret just to complete the set. Regardless, uh, Yatta is, is okay. Um, so it's the weaker one of the lot at, at 2050. Special on this card from the hand by truing in one normal summon monster. I only use each of the following effects once per turn. During the main phase, if this card was normal or special this turn, you can immediately after this effect resolves normal summon one monster. If you do, you cannot special on monsters for the rest of the turn except monsters with the same original type as that monster. So, if you were to normal summon the um, Uka, uh, not Uka, sorry, the Makami, you're only going to be able to special, uh, special summon that machine. So, it's very restrictive in that sense. Uh, and then, if this card special summon by its own effect is tributed, you gain 2,050 life points. So, it's a bit of a, a swings and roundabouts kind of thing because, obviously, if you were to go normal summon anything... True that one to special summon this down. This gives you an additional normal summon. You then attempt to normal summon again and you probably want to tribute this. I don't know why, to maybe bring out a Makami. Just to gain 2,050 life points. It's a little bit... Ugh. Um, it is a level 5 machine, so if you wanted to put in something like a Galaxy Soldier. Or a uh, Galaxy Soldier as a Union Carrier kind of engine. This could work nicely. Um, but other than that, no, no sorry. Then coming out of the Gizmex, uh, like I said, you're banishing off of your um, Orochi. You're going to be banishing off of Desires because it's the best draw card for this deck. Not only are you doing that, but you're also being able to... You need to set up your Banish to get into your Makami, and your Makami is going to give you the search. So just being able to go, hey, remember me? Uh, bring down a, um, a Manju, which probably by the time, if you've resolved the Desires and a Gizmek Orochi, you've pretty much got game. Like No one, very few people are going to be surviving that depending on what... Um, kind of backups they have. Then, of course, because of the grind game, and this is something that I'm very wary of, uh, we went with triple Necroface. Now, what makes this so important is, again, the Makami is only going to special some, uh, spin back your Banish Zone if it is destroyed by a card effect. So if it's not going to get destroyed by a card effect, you need a card you can normal summon because you don't rely on normal summoning any of your other Gizmex, really, apart from the Makami, um, to kind of reset that state. Um, and Necroface does that perfectly well, and it's something, especially when I was looking at the grind game, that you really, really need, because keep in mind, you're going to be banishing 10 off of Desires, you're going to be banishing 8 off of Gizmet every single time you resolve those cards, or just activate those cards in general. So you've got to be very, very careful, um, and if you open up a Necroface, it's just a way of going, cool, reset the game state for myself and my opponent's banish zone, but also boost them up as well. Then we've got Triple Eater of Millions. Now this card actually puts in a lot more work than you expect purely because its effect lets you get your Makami for free the first turn. 
because this needs to have six or more banished to be able to normal summon without tribute. So you Eater of Millions banishing five or six from your extra deck or some from your hand, whatever you want. You can even banish uh, a Necroface, but it is going to go face down. And then straight away you're able to normal summon your Makami. So these two combo off really, really nicely. Uh, and then obviously off of the Makami, you can then get a Gizmet. Gizmet's then going to banish eight more, so again, can help boost Eater of Millions. And if you wanted to, you can link these off. You could... And what you probably should do is you could link these off and go into the BLS Link Monster because obviously by that point you're going to have three monsters with different names and you're going to have monsters at a higher levels as well. So it just pretty much makes sense to go, hey, remember this? And then you drop a big Mac Daddy on them um, and it just gives you a lot more to play around with. So definitely something to consider. Continuing on, uh, we've then gone into... I'll show you the, lot, the nine engines at the end. We've gone with Trouble Desires, I mean Manju is probably the one time where it's like, if you actually, alright it hurts a little bit but I'm still going to normal summon a 4k Grim Manju. And what I love to combo, this is just for the trolls and the lols, uh, Trouble Soul Absorption. Because every time, if you play Desires you gain 5k, if you play a Rochi you're going to gain 4k. Already you're up your opponent by 9000 life points. Now this is something you can probably side in, just for the trolls in game 2 and 3. Um, it's not perfect because, you know, if your opponent stops it or... Um, anything like that, it can really suck, and if you don't open it, it doesn't suck. So you can probably take these out for more meta-relevant or kind of combat cards. Uh, and then, just for a, like, a little kind of space, is Cosmic Cyclone. Now, these can be adaptive in the nine card engines that I'm going to show you in a second, um, purely because one thing you've got to keep in mind with this deck is you've got to decide whether you want to go first or go second. If you go first, you're going to probably play a different type of engine than the ones I'm about to show you, um, or some of the ones I'm about to show you. If you go second, you're going to play something a little bit more aggressive. So you'll be looking at droplets, you'll be looking at less so Dark Wall or No Mores, but you could do that just to turn off the board. Harpies, Feather Dusters, Lightning Storms, the whole Mac Daddies of going second. So that's it for the main deck. Now that is only 31 cards, I believe. So now I'm going to show you the nine card engines that you can put in to help. Some of them aren't nine card engines, but I'll explain what you put in to get there. So we'll start off with the first one. Now this one was obviously inspired by your Asian spirit, uh, and you pretty much just play the Ice Hand uh, engine. So you've got your three ice. These are all in different orders, so I apologise. But you ultimately end up playing three ice, three thunder, um, and three fire. Now. The reason for these is obviously they do float, which is really nice. They're all different attributes. They are level 4s, uh, and then the fact you're going to get non-target pops off of these. It's just a nice little thing that I saw in uh, your Asian Spirits video that I was like, actually, that's kind of a cool idea. I, I like kind of revisiting this. Uh, my personal choice right now for aggression, going second, um, obviously you take out the Cosmic Cyclones or you put in something a little bit more, is the Zoo Engine. So just a small 9-card Zoo Engine of triple Fire Blade, triple Ram Ram, one Ratbeer, one Whiptail, and of course the one Barrage. Purely because this engine gets you in Dryden, which is a nice disruption, but also by putting Dryden in the extra monster zone, you have the ability to set everything off. The only downside of this is that, again, you need to use your normal summon to get it unless you open up Barrage. Um, but it does utilize with the extra deck, which I'll show you in a bit. And the reason the extra deck was so good, um, purely because of the way I was playing it today, um, just allowed me to pretty much turbo out Zeus. Um, the more common one that you'd probably want to play, but you've got to keep in mind that your, your deck, like I said, you play a lot of heavy, high-level monsters, can brick, is your hand trap deck, uh, your hand trap engine. So obviously you've got Nibiru's because you want to be going second. You're going to have your Ash Blossoms. I will get the third one in a second. Uh, Ash Blossoms, you've got your Crows or your Bells or your Skullmeisters, and then my little touch of Ghost Ogres, which can be Imperms, could be anything you want, but it's just like an, a hand trap engine can help utilize the deck um, and pretty much make it better balance going first and second. I wouldn't advise playing um, Omega. The only reason you play Omega, which is nice because you can specifically choose what you want to return of your banished cards, um, but the issue with it is you've only really got desires that your opponent's going to probably try and stop. Um, so you've got to be careful on that instance. They might try and stop the Gizmek in hand or grave, but again, you need to have no cards or no monsters. The final engine, of course, is the Golden Castle engine. Now, what makes this so good uh, with double hex, triple glyph, uh, triple castle, and then, of course, you'd put in, like, terraforming as well. But what makes this engine so good is because your Gizmex are all really special summons, you don't mind using the Golden Castle effect to special from deck your Hextrude. Hextrude is then more of an aggressor, but then off of the back of that, because you don't mind some of your special summons, you're getting, like, free Gizmex. You're able to protect them all with Golden Castle, and if your opponent forgets what Golden Castle does, it's so funny when they just go, attack, and you go, cool, Golden Castle, destroy it. And they're like, uh, yeah, I've got to add that. 
Uh, but it's just something you can look into. There are other times when it clashes where you're like, oh, I've got Golden Castle, but I've got Desires, and I have Gizmet. Uh, I've got um, Grand Manju. So what route do I go? But again, this is just another little fun engine that could really, really help. Like I said, I think the, the best engine right now for this particular deck that um, would probably work best in the current merit is a hand track lineup. You've got space to do it. Uh, and the most successful decks right now, if you're not playing control, playing a decent amount of hand traps that is going to kind of combat the meta is always going to be very, very nice. Uh, another little tech card, again, that I saw in uh, your Asian Spirits video is a uh, Banquet of Millions. And what I love about this, or what I found was really funny, so you banish any number of cards from your extra deck face down and banish the same number of random face down cards from your opponent's extra deck face up until the end phase. Only activate one Banquet per turn. So what makes this really good is if you don't rely on the extra deck again, you just go banish my entire extra deck and then your opponent loses their entire extra deck for a turn and that's when you can then storm them with your Gizmex. The only issue with that is that some of your Gizmex do require some extra deck monsters, um, so it's not always the best choice to try and resolve. Moving on to the extra deck, we'll start off with the Link Monsters. Now, the Link Monsters, you kind of keep it simple. One thing you can easily put in here as well is uh, like Link Karibo and Relinquish Animal to come off the back of your Eater of Millions. But in my opinion, Eater of Millions is actually a really good deterrent card purely because of its effect to banish face down. Really causes a lot of issues when your opponent tries to attack it or when you try and attack. So the links, you pretty much go staple on this one. So you've got your uh, IP Mascarina, your Phoenix, your Unicorn, uh, Cerberus, put them over here. But then, like I said, you've got the BLS. So you've got your two card BLS combo, which is literally, uh, well, 2.5 because you needed this card, which would literally be uh, Makami plus your um, Eater of Millions, Special Eater of Millions, um, normal summon Makami, Makami discard to get Orochi, Orochi brings out, link away into BLS, and then you still have Orochi to come back as well. Another card you could also consider is Topological uh, Trispania, Bomber Dragon, or Zero Boros, purely because of Gizmek. Uh, if you remember it from the um, good old fashioned um, Orcus days, you can trigger your Gizmek to trigger the Zero Boros or anything like that and pretty much nuke the board. Uh, Axis Code, because you've obviously got your Darks, your Fires, your Earths, you've got pretty much everywhere you need to go. Your defensive option of Appalooza. Uh, and then we've also got the Underworld Goddess of this closed world, because again, there's just space in the edge of that. There's no real thing that's really tying you down to it. Um, even if you play the Zoo Engine, the Zoo Engine will just minimize this. Uh, which I'll show you in a second. So that's it for the Link Monsters. Moving on to the XYZs. Um, XYZs are pretty straightforward on this one. So we've got the Abyss Dweller. Now, if you choose to use the Hand Traps, this next engine I'm about to show you is pretty much, not irrelevant, but not something you're going to be using. But when you're using like the Hands or you're using the Zoo Engine, you have the ability, so more so if you go for the Hands. So if you go for the Hands, because they float, all you need to do is keep the Hands floating and then normal summon one of your level fours. You make Chuck a Nine, um, now, it's not ideal, but the idea would be you can go Chuck and I, you can go to, so, let me just get two level fours as well, so you can see how many materials you get. So you've got the two there, you go Chuck and I, Hammer Kong, uh, Tiger Mortar, uh, Borbo if you want to. Um, obviously, you, you just attack. Now, you're going to take a bit of damage, but you're going to attack, and then what you can do is you can go Dryden. Dryden can detach a material to pop a card, and then because it's attacked, you go into Zeus. And then obviously the back of Zeus, Zeus is going to have six materials. So I know it's not like groundbreaking or anything, but it's one of those times because you can brick a little bit or go a little bit slow because of the way the deck is, you then still have a Zeus with three abilities to just go boom, boom, and boom. Um, and pretty much send the entire board. So I think Zeus is very, very powerful. And then when you bring in the Zodiac engine, obviously it's a little bit more consistent um, utilizing this particular engine itself. Uh, and if, of course, you do go with heavy hand traps and you don't use the hands or anything like that, then you'll rejig this space. But like I said, the extra day is not free, but you've got the creative ability to pretty much juggle around what you need. Uh, and the best thing about it is off of the back of Eater and Millions, again, normal summon your... Um, necro phase, all of it goes back into the deck. You reset to start one, so then you can go, all right, cool, um, Eater of Millions, banish 15 this time. Um, normal summon, necro phase, put it all back into the deck. Uh, another Eater of Millions, banish 15 again, bringing it all back into the deck. Yes, you're weakening your Eater of Millions, but the idea behind this is Eater of Millions is in this deck to utilize your um, Gizmek um, Makami, but then it's also in the deck to utilize the abilities to pretty much shuffle everything back in and use it as link climb fodder. So really good and gives you utility as well. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is that for a Gizmet deck. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, shout out to your agent spirit on this one, just for the pure inspiration behind it. And my God, I need to get 
all of these in ulti. Like, the, the Japanese ulties look so good. Um, but yeah, it's a very fun deck. I like the idea behind it. They're obviously missing, I wouldn't say they're missing anything particularly, but they have that struggle that it's a deck built off of at least um, a quarter, if not a third, of just high level monsters that, yes, can special summon them out, sells out with ease, but they need to have set up to do so. Still a very good deck, has the ability for easy OTK access as well, because keep in mind, um, Orochi special summons itself for free. Kaku, if there's a card in the extra monster zone, special summons itself for free. If there's two monsters um, from the extra on the board, special summon yourself your uh, dragon for free. And then you can also special summon your Ukar if they special summon from the deck. So you're just able to pretty much flood the board with five massive machine monsters. And if you wanted to be incredibly spicy, you could also put in a limit removal on this and just go, limit removal, attack, link all of them off <laughs> in May Phase 2. Done. Uh, but yeah, hope you like this. Please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more unique content coming up from the channel. As absolutely always, guys, and most important of all, stay safe and happy dueling.